is Republican Michigan State Senator Eric Nesbitt. Uh, Senator, thanks for being with us this morning. Hey, thanks for having me on. Just uh, to start things off here, your top line thoughts on President Trump's remarks last night, and uh, did he deliver as promised? Well, I think this is a real challenge right now for the uh, workers in the auto industry. It's been a challenge for the last few years uh, here, here in Michigan. And w what you get is you have President Biden right now trying to make oil and natural gas as expensive as possible. You saw that his first day in office that he closed down the Keystone XL pipeline. Uh, the Attorney General Dana Nessel here is trying to close down Line 5, which supplies a lot of oil and, and gas to, uh, to the Midwest. And so it's this anti- really anti-oil and natural gas uh, push from the Biden administration is making gas more expensive and they're providing all these subsidies and mandates uh, to push over to these electric vehicles. And what you're seeing is that they're having to rely on uh, Chinese technology, foreign materials to, to build these, and it's and it's putting real pressure on the American auto worker. Yeah. And I think the President Trump was right in terms of pointing out the fact that what the Biden administration is doing is actually destroying American auto worker jobs, not helping build up the American auto industry. Yeah, I know that uh, with the transition to electric vehicles, that would slash a projected 117,000 uh, jobs for these union workers. I did want to point out, though, I, I found it interesting that after after all this talk of him speaking to strikers, uh, that he gave his remarks at a non-union parts manufacturer called Drake Enterprises. There were UAW workers there. There were also non-union uh, auto workers there, too. Were you surprised by that decision? And, and was that a miss by the former president? I mean, here in Michigan, we have both you know, unionized shops and non-unionized shops. And I've always been one that I believe in individual choice. And if people want to be a member of the union, they should. If they don't, they shouldn't have to. And I think that shows the really the American way of saying that workers should have a have a choice on it. On the other, you know, and as we go forward is that the real challenges of what the United Auto Workers and the, the the auto workers are pointing out in their negotiations is the fact that Biden economics are not working, that the massive inflation that we've seen, nearly double digit inflation over the last few years, is really hurting the pocketbook of 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 workers on the lines throughout the automotive sector, and it's becoming very unaffordable to, to live in America because of Bidenomics. And so I, I think we need to take it straight on and say that workers uh, deserve a fair shake. And it's also something that we need to be able to have a competitive automotive industry instead of one filled with federal mandates by the Biden administration. And so the hypocrisy from the Democrats and President Biden is stark, and it's important that it's pointed out. Yeah, I, and, and to be fair, I will say that uh, the UAW president has yet to endorse uh, either President Biden or President Trump. He has a problem with Biden's green energy stance. He also has a problem, you know, saying that millionaires and billionaires can't fix the problems or know the problems with the working class. So uh, we'll wait to see who gets that uh, official endorsement, I guess. Senator Nesbitt, thanks so much for your time this morning. And thanks for covering this. It's an important fight in our lives here. Yeah. We'll continue to keep the spotlight on it. Yes, sir. We'll talk soon. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.